so hello everyone welcome to the second dive session so today we are going to see how to create a simple uh, two dimensional game using the unity game engine so we have with us uh, the steam club member uh, j viknesh from second year csc hello hello uh, everyone hello uh, uh, so uh, tell us uh, what you are going what you are going to do in this session um hello everyone um Hello, sir. Um, uh, today our session is going to be in game development in Unity. So before getting into it, uh, we need uh, two softwares named uh, Unity and Visual Code. Uh, the, this is the site for uh, Unity. You can type www.unity.com and you can see here a student version and also a personal version. You can use uh, anything of uh, any of the two, uh, any of the two. And uh, another tab uh, here is a uh, visual code. Uh, in this uh, visual code software, we can uh, uh, write the code and see the output in Unity itself. Uh, so it's, it is it is also a free version. Uh, these two software is uh, essentially needed to make a game in Unity. Okay, let's get into uh, get into the Unity software. Uh, this is the uh, Unity software uh, you can see here. So after installation, the icon will be present in the desktop. Yeah, um, you can uh, double tap uh, the uh, Unity uh, uh, Unity software, and uh, Unity uh, uh, Unity software will open. So um, you can see there are many many tab uh, in this uh, in the screen. So this is uh, known as a hierarchy tab. Uh, in this hierarchy tab, whatever you import, like uh, all the objects which are, which are present here, is a game object. Whatever you uh, import here will be appear on the scene. Scene window, and um, uh, this is known as project tab. The hierarchy, uh, the uh, whatever the folder like uh, scripts or a game object, whatever we created here, uh, we can uh, view here and we can import into our game scene. And uh, this is known as scene tab. Uh, we will make the level, uh, and uh, we can uh, make uh, uh, anything uh, in this uh, scene tab, which will appear as a game in this window. So, so that if is, uh, it, uh, is, is it a top view that is in the scene tab? Yes, sir. So we are able to see some uh, lines. So is it a top I, view or? Uh, no, it, it, it's, it's all a, it's all a, a game object. This is a single oh, game okay. object. This is also a game object, uh, and uh, this is a game object. Uh, all so this are uh, present in the highlight tab, and also which is uh, will, will be present in the uh, scene tab also. So how you the created name? this three uh, D modeling? This three D model. Uh, how did you create? Yeah, it, it, it's very simple. Uh, in the hierarchy tab, uh, just right click here. You can see all the 3D object, 2D object, okay. FX, and uh, click on 3D object and may make a cube. The cube will appear on the scene. Just, uh, okay. That's it. Okay. And um, if I click anything uh, in this um, hierarchy tab, inspector window, so inspector window appear. In this, we can uh, change our uh, position, rotation, scale of the object in the, in the transform section. And just uh, uh, I, I click, click here, uh, directional light. So the light um, properties will be appear here. I can change the intensity of the light, so shadows of the light, and I can also use the quality settings of the light and so on. Anything. Uh, okay. And uh, here uh, we can. Uh, this tab is known as asset tab. Uh, uh, we can make uh, a material, or a material means uh, like uh, color. Uh, give the color to the um, our player, our enemy, uh, mm -hmm. or uh, um, yeah, we can make a scene, new scene, or uh, we can uh, make a new folder and we can put all scripts into it. Uh, everything mm -hmm. we can do uh, in this um, asset tab. So it will appear in the project tab. With, uh, 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 appears on the pro project tab. Uh, and uh, we can see here as a console tab. Any errors uh, uh, we made uh, using a visual code will appear in this, uh, uh, errors will be appear in this uh, console tab. If no errors, it will appear as blank. And uh, here we can see animation tab. Uh, we can make the animation uh, like uh, we have to move the legs or um, hands of the character. Uh, mm -hmm. Like uh, we can make the animation here. So the animation will be um, done automatically. Uh, using this flowchart one minute. So it is a timeline. Okay. Yeah, it, it's a, it, it will be a timeline. And uh, here uh, the um, entry entry state, uh, entry state, uh, entry state, uh, entry state to next state. Here the animation is there, and uh, we can make the exit state. Uh, this the uh, animator tab. Okay. Uh, now let's get into this. Uh, for this. Uh, uh, 
uh, for, for this uh, game development i have gave, made a game like this like uh, i have made a play and uh, exit button if i click the play button we have the players here and the enemies will spawn um we can uh, we should not touch the enemies we should move according to it so uh, when i touch the enemy it will see i uh, shows the um window like a um, uh, game over and uh, it will press escape so if you can press escape and again uh, the uh, menu tab will uh, appear this game we are going to make uh, so uh, let's come come into the unity unity and uh, here we have a first we have a main camera this main cam uh, ca camera is the camera in which uh, view we need to view the game and that, that that it will show in the game tab and uh, essentially it should be in orthographic mode in perspective mode we can see like uh, it's like 3d okay. i don't want uh, it appear in 3d so i am make it in, uh, make it as a orthographic mode so i i will see all the um, objects as a, like 2d and i am giving the size as 5.7 here and um, secondly we have a directional light this will give the light to all the objects present here um so uh, we can keep uh, the direction like uh, anyway uh, anywhere uh, you can you want it and uh, the third one is known as player i have renamed uh, i made a cube and uh, renamed um, uh, the cube name as a player here uh and um, all the all the uh, um, properties of the cube will be uh, inbuilt when you create a create a cube and i have added the box collider component and the rigid body component in, in uh, extra so we, how to add this component means uh, click uh, your add component and type uh, box so you can um, have a uh, box collider and we can, you can, if you click it it will like, automatically appear in the inspector that's the same way i have um, attached a rigid body rigid body here you can appear, you can see it is appearing here so uh, it will automatically attach to uh, attach to the inspector of the cube like uh, it means player um now and um, i need the cube and i mean the player uh, to move only in x x direction like left and right only i don't want the player to move in up or down direction so for that i am make a constraint that i freeze the position of y and z and also the freeze the position of rotation of x y and also the z i don't want the player to rotate in any of the direction i need only the player to uh, move in only x x axis that is left and right mm -hmm. uh, so i, I have uh, only unchecked the x axis uh, my, uh, x axis uh, position and um, uh and here you can see for the fourth uh, fourth game object is spawn point 1 and spawn points 2 you can see here clearly uh, that is nothing uh, like a uh, spawn points i just add a uh, empty game object this empty game object is very useful uh, when you need uh, that is nothing should be appear on the scene uh, scene or the game uh, but i need something to make the uh, make the work of uh, that game object so i have made that is the boxes that are coming and hitting the player yeah uh, between these two spawn points okay. as you see here uh, between so these spawn two points means uh, the object should be created from that that point ah, spawn point that vertical yeah. dropping points yeah uh, the enemy the enemy will spawn okay. between these two spawn points like uh, random in random push between these two spawn points i need to sp uh, spawn a uh, enemy so okay. that uh, it, it it will spawn between these uh, two spawn points for that we need to move on to scripts okay. uh, i will uh, catch a uh, catch a type uh, in later uh, later okay. and um, here i will create two walls like the, this is also the cube uh, which i uh, which i only scaled in y direction that is 14.93 like that i i scaled this uh, two walls um for uh, this uh, uh, this is essential because uh, more number of uh, enemy spawning makes the cpu to heat uh, so i don't want uh, many of the enemies to spawn at a time 
so uh, when the enemy touches this uh, game object that is this uh, uh, horizontal wall it will destroy the game object this horizontal horizontal wall will destroy the game object like that i have to code uh, in visual code and i will attach to this uh, game object and um, uh, here uh, the last um, game object here we can see uh, it's a spawn handler uh, this uh, spawn handler is also a empty game object which will take care of the spawns uh, like uh, yeah, enemy spawning okay. so i i will tell that uh, uh, in later okay next uh, um i have created two prefabs here how to create a prefab is nothing but uh, just create a cube like i'm creating a player for uh, for instance i'm creating a play player so a creating player and uh, named as uh, like player one he rename as player one okay then i uh, i need to make it as a prefab prefab means uh, whatever properties we have given to this um, uh, player will be reflected often when we uh, attach this uh, player to my hierarchy so uh, when I create this player, I just drag this game object here and mm -hmm. uh, here, here, so it will it is made as a player one. So this is a prefab. This player one is a prefab. You can see here the blue color uh, box, box uh, like cube here. This means uh, we have created a free a prefab. This blue color uh, object so shows we have created prefab. That prefab is um, imported to uh, hierarchy of my unity uh, uh, unity. So I, I'm going to tell this my new player because I have my own play, uh, old player itself. Um, and um, we have learned how to, how to create a prefab. This prefab uh, will be uh, used often uh, whenever I need to. Um, I don't want to change the properties of that uh, prefab game object, uh, but I need to often use it in my scene. Uh, that, uh, for, that, uh, uh, for that means we can uh, create a prefab okay uh, so you can see here we i have a enemy prefab so i have uh, ha i have a tag here as enemy this tag will uh, uh, will detect me whenever uh, the uh, enemy spawns between these two uh, spawn points uh, when i uh, touch uh, when the enemy touch uh, this uh, horizontal collider and the enemy should destroy so this um, this tag will identify that when i when the enemy is colliding with this uh, horizontal wall uh, it should de uh, destroy this uh, um, destroy this game object or this is the enemy this prevents me uh, to uh, uh, not uh, much uh, spawning of uh, my enemy uh, so you can see here i have attached a box collider and also a rigid body and here uh, i have uh, freeze all the um, uh, uh, all the portion and rotation except the y axis because the enemy always uh, uh, spawns and uh, will fall down in only in y axis i don't want to move in the uh, other uh, two axis and also i don't want the enemy to rotate or uh, something else so i have um, uh, only unchecked this y axis freeze portion as y axis okay uh, and um, uh, I have created a script known as destroy player, and uh, the scripts uh, script, uh, script session will uh, section will be uh, viewed uh, later. And um, I have player uh, prefab here, so the same um, uh, the same properties will be, will appear because it is also a cube. And uh, we can see here uh, we have a tag, and I have created a player tag here. So you can see we have many tag like respawn tag, uh, finish tag, main camera, and uh, player tag. So I have clicked the player tag here. Uh, so we can create a new tag also. Like uh, I have had the enemy tag. How means like spawn points, uh, spawn points tag, walls tag. I have created this all uh, user user defined tag. We have to how to have this uh, new tag means uh, like uh, click uh, here uh, add tag. And uh, it will show here. Here, here there is a small plus mark. Click, uh, click the plus mark, and um, it will ask for a name of the name of the tag. I am just uh, uh, telling uh, it like, uh, for example, ground. So the ground tag will appear. I can uh, make this um, player uh, as a ground tag also, but I don't want to make the player as a ground tag because it will uh, 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 reflect on my session, uh, like uh, reflect on my game. 
so i'm again uh, re- uh, roll back to the play attack so uh, just a minute with me sir ah yes sir so to all the to all the viewers who are watching so hmm. any point of time if you have any doubts please type it in the comment section so i am monitoring the comment section so i will ask the question to vignesh okay yeah please vignesh continue hmm. okay sir um and um uh this is uh, this uh, um, uh this is how we we should make the game or uh, we should make the level okay and uh, now we we need to move to the code section uh, it's it is nothing but a simple code i have created uh, in all this so uh, here you can see a bunch of scripts i have uh, made here so What just uh, uh, the i have used here is c sharp c sharp language Uh, this is uh, much uh, relevant to c and uh, java uh, so like it, it will have a public class like uh, the, like that um, uh, syntax and also a much uh, closer to c uh, c language so i have created here a bunch of uh, game object um, here so how to uh, scripts here so how to create this these scripts means uh if you right click here you can see that is a create uh, a create and you can see a bunch of uh, elements which you can cre- create so uh, here we have a c sharp script so i if i click the script it will ask for the name of the script so i am giving that uh, destroy destroy so if i double click this um, uh, that uh, script me- script means it will open uh, yeah um, it yeah, open directly in a visual studio code so um, the first three here is i will copy this and um, i will put in one pair because uh, it will not be visible one minute so you can see here uh, the first line uh, present here is using system dot collections this is the inbuilt derivative uh, in uh, unity that is uh, like a header which we can see uh, uh, header which we can tell it uh, in c uh, c programming this is also a header using system dot collection dot generic it is also a, um, a unity derivative and uh, this is unity dot engine which should be essential these three things uh, uh, this uh, this all the things will be created uh, uh, automatically by the unity itself so i have told uh, that uh, it, uh, the, this uh, code will be relevant to java and also c you can see uh, it it makes a class like public uh, as a uh, public uh, public type public class destroy because my um, name is uh, the name of the script is destroy destroy this uh, say, uh, say this colon indicates it is inheriting uh, because that is that this destroy script is inheriting this mono behavior this mono behavior class it is a inbuilt class it which has many uh, functions which can be easy to make a game so this inbuilt function is uh, mainly uh, uh, built in in unity itself uh this mono be uh, so th- this uh, destroy script uh, script is inheriting this mono behavior class so um in the in below uh, we have a void start of function and void object of function this uh, void start of function will be called only for the first frame that means whenever the when I, whenever the game starts this uh, uh, start of function will uh, do its work that's it uh, it will not uh, appear once again it will not do its work again uh, once again so for, uh, for i need to make this um, um, uh, make this uh, um, this function again i, I need to uh, make this function again again so i need to use object of function this object of function will uh, update its content whatever type inside this subject of function will update its content again and again once per frame once per uh, if um, for example if my say, cpu is uh, much higher performance or uh, uh, if somebody cpu will be have lower performance according to the cpu uh, say, cpu's uh, performance uh, it will speed, uh, say, this update of function will 
make its uh, uh, content or uh, which, whichever uh, fun content which I type inside this uh, update function will uh, update uh, its uh, uh, will recursively ma uh, make this function uh, done automatically again and again uh, according to the computer's uh, CPU's performance. So uh, let's uh, so use, uh, double slash. It means that line is a uh, comment. Ah yeah, uh, yeah. If if we double 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 slash and uh, we type anything inside that double double slash will be uh, uh, accepted as comment. Okay. So this two for function is uh, inbuilt automatically inbuilt in Unity itself. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, let's let's see. Uh, I have created a, a, a player half player how to move only in left and right direction. So I have created this move player. One minute, I copy this and uh, I'll put in Notepad again. Okay. So uh, you can see automatically these three lines uh, will appear again, and um, uh, this uh, uh, pub this uh, this will be as a public class. This move play horizontal will inherit again the mono behavior itself. So I have created a float variable here. Like uh, that was also a public uh, public function, public float, uh, and I give it uh, give a variable speed. This float variable is a decimal uh, variable, which uh, for float data, sorry, float data type, and the variable is uh, speed. In this data type is a uh, decimal data type, and I given it as a speed variable. So I didn't give anything inside start function because I don't want to appear uh, make only once. I need to move the player whichever time as I need, uh, according to the enemy spawn. So I have given my code inside update function. So you can see here uh, in uh, in update function, I have give uh, given this. This means my player. I have um, uh, I, I am telling that this this is my player. I am going to attach the script to my player only. So I have given this. This is uh, this is uh, referring to my player. Transform as, as you see that. Um, yeah, we have a transform tab before I told uh, in my um, uh, in, in my inspector. So transform as a function that translator function. Between the translator function, I have given input dot get access raw. This input means our keyboard input. Uh, this uh, uh, this input refers to our keyboard input. That is get access raw. I'm telling it uh, horizontal. This horizontal means. Uh, whether it is A or D or left arrow or right arrow. Horizontal refers to these two, uh, these four keys. We can use A or D, D arrow or left or right arrow. We can uh, we can use the, these uh, four keys to move my player. So uh, within these keys, which is multiplied with speed, speed uh, speed can be changed in inspector tab. So so only I have given this uh, my speed variable as a public. So, multiplied by speed, uh, I have told that uh, this uh, update function will um, uh, act according to the to the CPU's performance. So I have given I don't want to uh, act um, uh, according to the CPU performance. It will if I give this time dot delta time, it will uh, make only whether the CPU is uh, high or uh, low low end. It will um, uh, make only one if uh, one update per second, one frame per second. It will update my uh, uh, this update function. So this is uh, the, this translate function has three uh, three uh, arguments. One argument is. Uh, one one argument is here is uh, I have given this input that get access raw of horizontal into speed into time dot delta time, and the y axis I have given zero because I don't want to move in uh, uh, y axis because I just want to move in the x and uh, x axis only. So I have given uh, here as a y axis zero and also is axis zero. I don't want to move my player in uh, front or back. So I have given it as zero. Uh, that's, that's it. Uh, my, so. That's my uh, so hmm. I think you can type, type your doubt also uh, here and monitoring the chat section. So if you have any doubt, please type the doubt. Okay, continue. Hmm. Sure, sir. Um, so um, this is uh, my code, which will move the player. Uh, that is in horizontal, uh, horizontal direction. That is left and right. So I can move my player using this code uh, in left and right direction. Uh, this is the code I have. Um, 
uh, attached to my uh, player that is you can see move player horizontal script i have attached my player so the i have given the speed uh, here uh, as 10 so i can move the player in that speed you can see here so you can see in the game tab i can move this player uh, as I, I am given 10 so i i, I cannot move in uh, up or down or um, uh, front and back this is uh, this is my script uh, according to my script the queue my player will act if i if i increase the speed like uh, i'll give if, if i give 50 here you can see how how fast my player will move see how fast my, my player i don't want to move uh, like this my, my player should not move, uh, move this much speed so i i have given only 10 here this speed will um, calculate our uh, uh, player speed how much uh, speed the uh, my player should move in left or right direction um the next script uh, I'm going to uh, show is whenever my um, uh, enemy uh, spawns and it uh, collides with this uh, horizontal wall, it automatically destroys. That, that's that what uh, that's what I, I needed because I need I don't want to spawn many of the enemies and again again so it will damage the CPU performance also game performance. It may lag. So I have made the destroy player player script as you can view here. Um, once once again, I'll copy it and um, paste it in my notepad. Again, you can see uh, these three are um, um, these three are um, uh, inbuilt, and I have added that using Unity Engine dot Seed Management. Why I have added uh, is I'll tell it and uh, tell you later. Um, here I, again a public class destroy player uh, which inherits mono behavior and uh, i have given a string uh, public string like uh, i made a string data type named a variable um str tag so uh, i didn't uh, they didn't give a, given anything inside this start and also update function i have uh, given an another function which is inbuilt in the mono behavior class that is void on collision enter um we have uh, many data data type like uh, we we know only in data type float uh, character string that's it we, we all know but uh, unity has a much more uh, exten uh, extensive data type that is a collision data type which has a variable of uh, collision uh, col this is a, this is a variable and this is a data type so uh, it, it takes one argument that is collision argument it will take only collision argument so um, this is this is of a data uh, function void void on collision enter uh, collision col if uh, this uh, col this uh, collision this variable this variable dot game object dot tag equal equal str tag uh, that is that means if that game object tag is equal to equal to this str tag str tag means whatever the string i have type inside that uh, str tag variable uh, will make the game object destroy that's what i have given if this um, uh, this is equal to that str tag i make made that unity to destroy my game object that's it and i made the scene uh, to load my scene to game over scene i have made another scene that is game over that you uh, are seen in the last whenever my uh, whenever whenever i destroy my game uh, like uh, whenever i i, I if, if i de uh, collide with my uh, enemy the game or screen will appear so i have uh, made a function scene manager dot load scene of game over so for this line i need to import a header that is nothing but unity uh, using unity engine dot scene management okay so scene can be uh... It can be a 3D model as well as, well as a picture. Because no, no. Over the uh, uh, scene is nothing but uh, you can see this is one scene. And uh, I have created another scene uh, like uh, game over scene. You can see here. So uh, see, this is this is another scene like game over. I have made uh, this uh, uh, scene that, that you can make uh, made it like uh, make like create and you can create a uh, click here scene. So a new, new scene will be created. So I have told tell Unity to uh, if my game has, uh, player has been destroyed, uh, load that game over scene. That uh, load that game over scene. I have told that Unity to um, uh, make the uh, load that scene. Like a uh, game over, I have one scene. 
as you see here uh, see here you can have game over uh, one scene i have created this scene will be uh, this scene will appear just a so, minute uh, uh, i think uh, we have with us uh, ashok sir ha uh, sir good evening uh, ashok sir sir uh, if you have any doubt you can interact with him uh, no no it's going uh, effectively i am watching uh, his uh, flavor of uh, unity in uh, game Thank development it's Thank interesting you. i just want to I just want to yeah. demonstrate what is possible in youtube So yeah yeah in, uh, corona time yeah please proceed please proceed i think uh, people are on the way to listen yeah thank you right. sir thank you thank you yeah. any doubts i can please uh, bajini can yeah sure okay sir okay. Uh, um you. hi sir um and third um, uh, third one is um i have shown uh, i have shown how how the player has been destroyed and uh, how the um, um uh, how, how, how how to move the player and uh, the uh, last one is how we mm. uh, how, how we spawn the game of like how we spawn this uh, enemy between these two spawn points this is uh, must uh, must uh, must be essential uh, in uh, in, in uh, unity the for this uh, game because we need to spawn a, a enemy i think uh, place any game object here as enemy but it should spawn automatically when i click play as you see here uh, in the scene tab when i click play it will automatically spawn between these two uh, spawn points as you can see how much uh, the enemies have been spawned this uh, red color um, boxes are or uh, enemies you can see how much enemies are spawned here so i need to destroy this first uh, game object uh i mean this uh, enemy so i have made this uh, arjun collider to whenever this enemy collides here you can see it automatically uh, this uh, whenever this uh, enemy uh, touches this uh, game object it will automatically destroy itself you can see here this uh, automatically will um, uh, disappears automatically the game object will disappears you can see automatically is it possible to increase the number that is uh, ah. Some, in some games as we play the number of boxes that is dropping will become more hmm. yeah uh, we, uh, for, for that we need to get into the um, spawn script now that i am uh, going, going to show now uh how i in this spawn script so we can here spawn script i copy it and um, show in notepad so you can see i have um, this uh, four lines are same again and you can see here i have um, uh, this uh, this data type this transform this uh, again a data type of unity transform data type of unity uh, of uh, um, uh, variable spawn point 1 this is also a uh, same data type that is transform data type of uh, unity i have given the variable as spawn points 2 i have uh, made this two uh, variable spawn point one and point spawn points two which is the of uh, public the uh, public type so um, pub, uh, again uh, i have given a public uh, public the type of uh, data type game object this is of the data type game object which i named as prefab um here uh, we have float a uh, uh, float data type of uh, spawn delay 0.725f uh, this uh, that's uh, this float uh, very uh, value should be always should be given like this uh, like uh, 0.25 and the f should be uh, f is essential we should we cannot give 0.25 that's it uh, we cannot uh, given the uh, give like this so we should always uh, we should give like a 0.25f so i have given float um, a spawn de a spawn delay as uh, 0.25 if i increase this uh, uh, value the more number of objects can be spawned as you can ask the question uh, question also uh, like uh, uh, whether we can increase the spawn rate so this is uh, this spawn delay will um, make the um, uh, uh, enemies can spawn more and more uh, oh, no, we, if the increase it will go down because it is saying delay right yeah so uh, increase that value the number must be increase the increase the spawn delay and spawn time value we should increase this both both value so it it will automatically spawn uh, spawn faster uh, so more number of objects will be spawned as uh, so that means enemies can be spawned okay. uh, same uh, spawn time spawn time i given as uh, to 0.25f and i have given a uh, data type vector 3 this vector 3 is nothing but x y and z axis 
uh, and this also data type and i given a variable as ins portion uh, so uh, within this startup function i have uh, told uh, the unity to invoke repeating this invoke repeating is a function which will uh, repeat itself that means this uh, i have uh, made a spawn function right uh, here this spawn function will automatically repeat uh, repeat itself again and again uh, be between this spawn delay and spawn time so i have given these two variables here spawn delay and spawn time invoke repeating of this is spawn function my function here and the spawn delay uh, variable and spawn time variable <laughs> so i have made this uh, spawn function in this spawn fu function <coughs> i have given a, a vector 3 that is by vector 3 i have given a um, uh, ins portion is equal to vector 3 function uh, should have three arguments that is x argument y and z x argument so i have given here as a uh, new vector 3 of random dot range this random dot range function will make my uh, enemy to spawn between these two points anywhere uh, yeah, anywhere between this uh, uh, these two spawn points so i have given uh, which, uh, which point i need to uh, spawn so i need i, I have given this spawn point one dot portion dot x and spawn points two dot portion dot x for uh, for x axis again i have given i need to spawn in uh, this same y axis no so i have given here so the random dot range of spawn point one dot portion dot y and spawn points two dot portion dot y and i don't want to uh, uh, don't want spawn in uh, yeah, only i this is a, this is like a 2d game right x and y axis so i don't want to spawn in z axis so i have given this uh, z axis zero and i have i need to know whether the um, um, uh, object has spawned so i have given this is no this is nothing but a print of statement uh, in c so um, this debug.log will uh, um, uh, will appear uh, will uh, this uh, this function uh, this instantiated this uh, um, this print of statement will appear in the console uh, console tab so whenever i give, give debug.log instantiated i have given this uh, um, uh, this, this i want to appear because i have instantiated this uh, function has been uh, done like, like that i need to uh, make a print a message so uh, and this function will instantiate my uh, um, uh, my game object in this portion this ins portion this ins portion i need to um, um, I, I need to spawn my game object so instantiate of my prefab what i need to instantiate that game object name in my game object name here i given as prefab that game object comma ins portion in this portion even this x axis only y axis is taxes in this portion comma coordinate identity this coordinate identity nothing means nothing but rotation i don't want any rotation that, uh, that's why i'm telling to unity coordinate identity i don't want any rotation just spawn in um, uh, uh, in, in this portion so i given uh, this script, uh, script to my um, uh, spawn handler game of this empty game of i given the spawn object one so i have uh, taken this spawn object one and i have uh, attached to my spawn point one and this spawn point two i have attached to a spawn point two transform and my prefab is my uh, enemy uh, enemy as you see here this red color object so i have um, uh, click and drag and i place it in prefabs uh, column uh, so that's it so whenever i um, click play it will automatically spawns this um, as you see here or it automatically spawns between these two spawn points not uh, above uh, uh, it will, uh, not it will only spawn between these two spawn points not here or uh, um, uh, here it will only spawn between my level the level only mm. and uh, uh, next we are going to see how uh, uh, how we are going to build the project and i need this uh, game as an exe type so that we, I can play it in my uh, PC itself. For that, uh, we, uh, you can see. Uh, so with so, that we'll, uh, with that we'll try to wind up and see if anybody's. Uh, ah yeah. Any hmm. Yes. Ah uh, yes. Sir. So you can see here uh, build settings, and uh, here uh, you can see what are the scenes I have imported. So um, I have made these uh, two scenes uh, also, uh, also because uh, uh, I need a menu scene here. So I have made this menu scene and also a game over scene. 
so uh, in this hierarchy only we should um, uh, build our project so first scene will appear that is menu scene will appear here and this the second scene will be my main game and the third scene will be game or tab so if we, if we see that uh, if we, uh, uh, in this hierarchy if we, if we place and uh, make sure that uh, this option is clicked that pc max and linux stand alone only and uh, which we are, when i click build it will ask for a, a, a folder which i need to um, uh, which i need to place that all the files and it, it will make a game like this so when i click the cxc uh, i um, this uh, play uh, the this screen will appear so when i click play the automated games will run whatever game i i then run and uh, when i hit the enemy the game over the screen will appear when i press escape uh, it, the same again the menu screen will appear so i can play again or if i would need to exit i can exit the game so the, this, this is how we should make a develop a game in unity so if somebody is starting from scratch how long do you think it will be uh, till they uh, learn something to this level in unity uh, like uh, for up to this level first they have to know a oh, yeah, basic uh, uh, idea in a c sharp uh, language because they need to know c sharp language then only they can um, uh, how the uh, how the scripts work and they need to know unity where they should put that uh, scripts or where they need to um, attach the game object how to make a level they should know all this it will take at least uh, like uh, three months is enough to uh, come to this level and uh, when we are moving for uh, conversion converting this game towards for android mobile Oh. I think in the previous screen, uh, I could able to see that uh, even if you want to port the game to Android, we have an option, right? Yeah, here we have Android, so we can click this Android, and we have to uh, for a newly installed uh, Unity version, they uh, they will not have this uh, all this option because they need to download the Android SDK from uh, Unity site itself. If they download the Unity and SDK, and this option will appear, so we can switch the platform and we can uh, use it to um, uh, Android too. Okay, so if we have that compatibility of the SDK only, this game uh, will support, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, right. No. Great. Thank you, sir. So, <clears throat> so thank you, Inesh. On uh, behalf of Steam Club, I want to thank you for presenting this session. Yes, sir. Thank uh, you, sir. So the recording of the session will all, also be available in the same link. We will circulate the link also. So it is stored mm -hmm. in, the, in our YouTube channel. So anybody can watch this. And I'm sure they can get back to you if they have any further doubts. So, uh, so thank you very much. So this is a very good uh, uh, example that even students can sit at home. They can learn something. And if they want to share their ideas, so they can always contact any of us. We can contact Steam Club, or I think uh, Ashok sir will also guide if they are able to present through innovative projects. Sir, am I correct, sir? And, uh, and also, uh, you can uh, upload this uh, process and uh, screenshots and movements in GitHub and share that uh, uh, link to students. Sure, sir. Yeah. Sure, sir. Uh, the link will be in the also description of, of the YouTube itself, and also I'll share to uh, sat, uh, sat this all the project files will be shared to Sonan and sir also, sir. Yeah, usage of GitHub must be encouraged towards students. Hmm. Sure, sir. Uh, I'll be uploading GitHub also, sir. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So thank, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you, Vignesh. Uh, so thank you, all those people. Uh, so hope the session was useful. Please send your comments to team at ritchennai.edu.in. So uh, we are looking forward to hosting more such, more such sessions. So if any of you are really interested in presenting such sessions, please uh, contact us. And uh, thank you once, and right, once again. So bye. So Vignesh. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, thank you, everyone uh, who watched uh, this uh, uh, session. And um, uh, make sure um, any uh, doubts, uh, uh, you can uh, comment it uh, in um, uh, comments. So I can uh, uh, send you a message uh, uh, as much as they as possible. So before beginning, before ending, I once again, because I should have said this in the beginning, but uh, we didn't know how much time the session will take. So immediately, we start, started without giving any introduction to Vignesh. So as far as I have noted him, so he is, he is uh, inbuilt interest towards learning all these programming languages 
and he has also created a lot of augmented reality uh, applications also so he recently made a augmented reality application where a person who doesn't know anything about 3d printing can use that ar app to learn 3d printing so he uh, made an application and he even went to iim bangalore and presented it in the future of learning conference so that was well appreciated there so uh, it's really a good thing that uh, rit has the students who are really interested in learning on their own without nobody forcing them and also willing to share their knowledge with everybody so i wanted to add this point also to the session so uh, thank you everybody for joining once again so let us meet in a similar session in the coming week thank you thank you sir